Hello again, welcome back to Into the Reach. Uh, this is episode 5. In the last episode, unfortunately, uh, we not only failed our objective, and uh, we actually failed to save humanity. Our mechs got, got uh, returned through the time breach into the future, and we, and one pilot of the two that were still alive came with it. This time, we're going to try again, put a new game, and we're going to use a completely new squad of, uh, of mechs. So we saved Laura Kim, brought her back through the time breach. She's leveled up once and has a plus one move. Change the time traveler. Alright, so I could, I could go back and pick a brand new Ralph Car Carlson, but I haven't unlocked anyone else yet. Ralph Carlson is the uh, character that I renamed Kyle Reese in the previous uh, game. But we'll be sticking with Lauren for the moment. And a new squad, because, well, we didn't manage to save the world with these mechs, so we'd better try something different, huh? So, unlocking new squads happens by doing achievements and collecting coins. We have four coins, and so we can afford to unlock one of these first three squads. So there's the Rusting Hulks. RST weather manipulators allow these mechs to take advantage of smoke storms everywhere. Interesting. Does that mean they can shoot from in smoke or what? Normally smoke stops enemy shooting. The Zenith Guard, Detritus' beam technology and Pinnacle's shield technology create a powerful combination. Well, beams and shields sound fun. Or Blitzkrieg, RST engineers design their squad around the mass destruction capabilities of a harness lightning. Hmm. Smoke storms. Beams and shields. Or... Mass destruction capabilities of Harness Lightning. I Tiny Bob in the chat is saying mass destruction in capital letters, and I think I think he's right. I think we failed in the mass destruction last uh, game, so I think Blitzkrieg is the squad to go with. So the three mechs. The Prime is a lightning mech. Uh, his weapon is an electric whip, does chain damage through adjacent targets. That's nice, there's often adjacent targets, so uh, chain damage. Starting with two damage, that's that's a whole lot better than what we were dealing with before. That's before any unlocks. Uh, three, three hit points and four movement. And the Brute is a hook mech, which is armoured, so it takes one less damage from uh, weapons. Its weapon is a grappling hook, so it does no damage, but it pulls a mech towards it, or pulls itself towards other things. Interesting. And uh, the ranged is that boulder mech, which looks like it's about to throw rocks. Uh, rock Accelerator. Launch a rock at a tile, pushing adjacent tiles. So it does two damage. Uh, otherwise, it is basically the same as the artillery, except for extra damage. So this looks like... This is, I guess, the mass destruction. I think this looks like a good squad. But these mech names, Lightning Mech, Hook Mech, Boulder Mech, are really uninspiring. Zappy kill. Grapple pie. And Rockstar. Not Figaro. Um Zappy kill. 
Same difficulty. I'm not going to put it up yet because I'm not winning the game. But I'm not going to put it down because I didn't feel I was that, you know, doing that badly. Just generally badly. Not that it was too hard. So, let us begin. I'm back, and there's the archive I've restored. Still, that won't last if I don't stop the VEC, says Lauren. So, what have we got? Right now, we've got no cores. Uh, we've got the electric whip, which we could, of course, disable a weapon, which would be silly. Um, Alright, so that's got moved from it four because it's got Lauren in it with a plus one. Okay. Otherwise, the basic movement and health stats are the same as we had last time. The hardest problem in world saving time travel is naming things, says McGordon. So he's completely right. So, last time, we managed to unlock three islands. We didn't make it to the fourth because we died in the uh, snows of Pinnacle Robotics. Uh, but that means we can tackle them in any order we want this time around. And although the island shape, I believe, is the same, I think what happens on each of them is different. So, I'm going to start, I think, this time with RST and see how we go. Unless, unless, do we need to beat this one to unlock the next one? Oh no, we just need to complete three islands. Presumably in one game? Or generally? Previously we've completed those two, so maybe if we complete this one we'll unlock the fourth. I guess we'll find out later on, but we just did a frozen wasteland last episode. So let's go back to the desert. RSD was divided on asking you for help. It was viewed as a weakness, but the choice is stark. We either ally with you or lose the island. Right, our power grid is... Five points out of seven. Reasonable. We have the starting grid defense of 15%. Cleft would be a really good place to start just to get that power grid back up. And then if we, you know, if we don't lose buildings and then get unlock additional power, that boosts our grid defense and that just generally helps us. But let's see what these missions are. Doomsday Point has... Uh, th three enemies and an earth mover in the middle. One of our earth movers is filling in a chasm created by a malfunctioning stabilizer to make sure it stays in one piece. So presumably there's, there's a huge gap and it's slowly filtered in turn by turn. Bonus objectives for two corporate rep. One, defend the earth mover. Two, end the battle with less than four mech damage. That sounds pretty easy to do, but that's just pure rep rewards. And doesn't I guess it leads to here, which is the least exciting rewards on the island. Uh, Thunderbolt Grid. The VEC took out this region's ground stabilizer. We're not sure what the result will be. What's your step? So there's seismic activity, which means probably means parts of this uh, will be collapsing into the ground every single time. Fun. Kill at least seven enemies and protect the emergency batteries. Or cleft. We shape the weather patterns over the island so our solar farms can harvest sunlight 12 hours a day. But to do that, the farms will need to remain standing. Defend both solar farms. So that's got one objective. Which is worth two power. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for Thunderbolt Grid first. Because seismic activity sounds like fun. Also risky. We'll try and kill seven enemies. We'll definitely try and protect the emergency batteries way up in the back here. Let's give it a go. A firefly, a hornet, and another firefly. So. Zappy Kill has four movement. Now. Let 
let's we hope we hope these enemies bunch up because that's Zappy Girl's strong suit. Uh, Grapple Pie. Now, Grapple Pie is interesting. Grapple Pie doesn't have any damage attacks; just moves itself or pulls pulls itself or another enemy. I guess we're gonna need to. We're probably gonna want to try and buy another weapon with the reputation we've earned, but we have to beat the island first. So. I guess Grapple Pie can start here, and Rockstar can start in the middle of the back with three movement that gives movement uh, back and forth. Great, let's do it. Time to make history, not be history. So, certainly if this tile will become a chasm at the start of the enemy turn. So if we push the enemies onto this, they will die. If we sit on this, we will die. Unfortunately, they did not bunch up. So, Zappy Kill is maybe doing some zapping, but not much killing this turn, I think. We have three buildings under attack. And not enough... Not really enough abilities to... To do a, the right job with it, I think. Rockstar! Rockstar should probably drop a boulder here. Do no damage, but push the Firefly out of the way and push the Hornet out of the way. And the Hornet will then attack this Firefly. What order are they attacking? Uh, that, atta that Firefly attacks first, so the Hornet can't kill it for us and save the building. That's a shame. That's a great shame. But, Firefly does one damage, so... Isabel, I didn't even see how our pilots work. We've still got Lauren in. We've got Lauren this time in the uh, Zappy Kill in the Prime. We have Isabel in. I forget the name of this this mech class. It is. Just tell me. No, but the 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 grappling fly, the, the grappling hook one that was a cannon last time. And we have Ganymede, who doesn't look very human there. Ganymede in this boulder throwing mech. So the Hornet will take one damage and block an enemy next turn if it's still sitting there. Or we may be able we can probably kill it. So, two buildings saved. Let's use our lightning whip. Which will damage the Firefly and kill the Hornet. And let's move Isabel there. To, with armor, should be able to tank that one damage with no problem whatsoever. And could you... Can't use the grappling hook. No targets available, apparently. Well, you can't pull some towards you that's right next to you. So let's let that play out and hope the chasm is not in a bad place next turn. Earthquake warning. No damage thanks to the armor. Another Firefly and another Hornet and the Hornet is sitting over the chasm. The Hornet can fly anyway, so the Chasm probably wouldn't bother it. Definitely bothers our movability though, that's an inter interesting thing I had not realised. So, Firefly attacking one building, another Firefly attacking one building, Hornet attacking one building, and, and another Firefly that is not attacking us. What's the attack order here? This Firefly right by the water is going to attack 
first, so it could hit the Hornet, but the Hornet's only two hit points. If we attack the Hornet, we kill it anyway. Nobody's bunched up, which is unfortunate. So our Lightning Whip is less than ideally useful. We can't really use... We can use, we can pull the Hornet out of the way so it doesn't do anything, so there's an option. Uh, we could pull this Firefly into the Chasm, which would be fun, and would kill it. We have four enemies, three turns. And we can't tank one attack like we could last time, except obviously this Firefly's attack doesn't matter to Isabel. So Isabel should probably pull the Hornet so it does, so it's harmless. Lauren should probably just attack this uh, same Firefly here. And I guess Rockstar. Oh, we've got to try and kill Seven. Well, maybe we'll have a chance to push that one into the chasm next turn. Rockstar should probably just throw Rock onto this mountain and push that Firefly out of the way. Which means nobody's really moving much, which is interesting. And no, none of these, none of these Vecca are even bunched up in a place that we could push them in two directions. To useful effects. Hmm. Well, I have a simple plan to deal with the problem, but it's not going to solve the problem. We'll be killing one enemy this way, and that means we will have five next turn to deal with, and that's really getting us into hairy territory. Can I kill two of these and save the buildings? Two of them have two hit points. So, for example, if if Ganymede moves up here, could tank one damage, which is not brilliant, because it's only got two hit points, but could kill that Hornet. With three turns left, can Ganymede avoid any future damage? The answer is probably yes, being artillery being up the back. Um, it's a possibility. In fact, if we take that damage, if we're willing to take that shot, then Ganymede is killing the Hornet, Zappy Kill is killing the Firefly, and Grapple Fire can actually pull this Hornet into the chasm and kill it. So we could actually kill three instead of one. I think that sounds like a much better idea. At the cost of one damage. Mm. Don't like taking damage, but killing three of these enemies at once is a lot better. A much, much better idea than only killing one of them. So I think I'm going to do that. Bang. Did you see that? Now, Grapple Pie is not going to be very useful sitting right here by the edge of the chasm next turn, so I think I'll move back a little. Oh, no, 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 let's undo that move. Pulls it right up towards, so I have to be sitting on the edge of the chasm to pull them into the chasm. So let's do that. Bye bye! And Zappy Kill! Oh dear. That's going to do damage to us as well. I did not realize that uh, our lightning would damage us. Oh well. Sorry, Isabel. At least we only took one damage because of the armor. Somehow armor protects against lightning. You know, that's, that's fine. So we have one more attack going to happen here. We'll have three Vec next turn. We've killed four. If we kill three more, we get the objective. That's doing pretty damn well. Round collapsing. Starts to be really off the scale. This unit has been compromised. System failure imminent. Well, 
Well, there's a dumb scorpion, huh? There's a very dumb scorpion. It goes and sits on the tile that's going to collapse, which is going to be the very first thing that happens. We have a firefly sitting right next to the ground tile, so we don't even have to hit it. We can just artillery the spot I'm sitting on right now from further back and push it back into the chasm. That will be two more dead. Grapple Pie can uh, move back out of the way somewhere. And Zappy Kill can come and zap this one to death. This sounds like a good plan. Go fall down. Is there any point pulling using my grapple to pull that? Probably not. But, uh... No, because then if I attack it, it'll be here and, and do damage there as well. So let's go do some zappy killing. Doing two damage is so much nicer than one. To think I signed up for the archive as a historian. Well. Uh, Lauren just leveled up again. Now got a plus three grid defense. So our grid defense is now 18%. That's that's quite nice. Not the uh, not the skill I was hoping for. I was hoping for like a health boost because that's generally more flexible for us. But um, yeah, that's fine. Oh look, I didn't realize when we threw rocks, we threw actual rock walls like the digger makes. That's that is interesting. That means we can use the rock throw to stop attacks as well. As well as push things. I saw the rock appear here, but I didn't I didn't put two or two together. Uh, so that's that's interesting. It will obviously block attacks, it'll block movement. Uh, for at least for non flying creatures. I don't know if flying creatures can sit on top of them. But I should I should remember that. What else do we have to do? Well, we could grapple all the way to here if we wanted for no particular reason. I don't think I don't know where the next chasm is coming, but it could well be there. Uh, first thing that's happened is the ground is going to collapse, and both those enemies will die. So we have nothing to worry about in terms of attacks. And even if we did, that rock wall would stop it. Right. Oh, we could also grapple. Well, that might save us one movement if we need it. Yeah, why not? Hello. Goodbye. The back of the reach topside, there'll be more trouble now. Okay, we've got an alpha scorpion, which can't really do anything. We have a flying soldier scion. What's the soldier scion do? All other vet receive plus one HP as long as it's living, so it's boosting this particular fellow. Now this particular fellow is not really going to do us any damage whatsoever, but we can pull it into the chasm, so we absolutely should. And Ganymede can drop a rock on this flying one into the chasm, but do two damage to it. And we've already killed seven, so we're actually going to kill nine. We're going to really blow that bonus objective into the water. But the XP for killing the rest of them is, is absolutely worthwhile, worth having. So, come and fly! Or not. And, well, all rocks can fly even if scorpions can. And somehow braces a rubble which sits on top of the chasm before vanishing entirely rather than collapsing. No buildings took damage. We killed nine enemies out of the required seven. And the emergency batteries are still standing. This looks like a very successful starting mission. I shouldn't get cocky, of course. Enemy turn. No enemies. We killed them all. The Vecca dead. Region is secure. They're blowing troops to hold the area before the weather shifts. So we got one rep for killing the enemies. We got one power. So we're almost up to full. Uh, for protecting the emergency batteries, protect all civilians, we got a promotion, and some XP, starting XP for our other soldiers. Understood. That's brilliant. 
So we don't have any reactor cores, so we can't do any mech upgrades. So we have three places to choose for from for the next mission. Proving grounds. This site holds two warheads designed by a temporal physicist, Dr. Renfield, utilizing your breach technology. RST was deemed the safest, safest place to test them. Uh, so two prototype Renfield bombs, which we must defend. Now we had, I don't know if it's the same bombs, but uh, last game there was a mission with two bombs. And uh, that was that was kind of unfortunate for us because I pushed them into ourselves, blowing both of them up, hurting ourselves badly and failing the only op optional objective. Um, I think that was episode two. Yeah, so if you watch episode two, you can see me do an absolutely classic blunder. Um, which thankfully I had my reset turn, so and it was all happening on my turn, so I was able to reset. So it didn't didn't doom us as soon as it might. Uh, Gamma Trench, high threat detected. We need to move aggressively. We need you to destroy as much landmass in the region as you can before the Vec use the mountains as hive as hives. Destroy landmass. Objective: destroy two mountains. That's new. Kill at least seven enemies. Destroy mountains and kill seven enemies. And protect the power generator. And it starts with an alpha firefly. Well. Destroying seven enemies while killing... While, while destroying two mountains is going to be... An interesting challenge. Especially with only two attacks a turn. Because uh, Grapple Pi can only grapple, not... Hurt things. There's a little bit of water to pull enemies into, but this water at the end is only good for pushing, and we've only got one rock throwing mech that can push things, so that sounds tough. And Cleft, which I was looking at before, defend both solar farms, which is the only bonus objective. That sounds achievable, more importantly, it gives us two. If we do it, we get two grid points. If we only defend one, we only get one grid point. Getting as many grid points as we can is. A really useful idea. It doesn't unlock any new areas for us though. The only other interesting place might be here and we'll have to go through one of those to find out but first I will do cleft and try and get that power. Two scorpions and a firefly. Scorpions have three health unfortunately so our lightning can't kill them in one hit as much as I would like it to. So... Also interesting, with this layout we don't have as much freedom of movement for our... Um, artillery, as I would normally like. Although perhaps we can set up this side and and get access to most of the map that way. I'm going to start here because that will give with Zappy Kill. That will give Grapple Pie, if starting here, space to move all around, which could be very important for pulling enemies. I'm going to start Rockstar up here and see how we get on. See what these enemies do. Well, first thing they do is try and web us up, which is annoying. But not necessarily the end of the world. So none of these enemies can be killed to this turn. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, we can drop a rock here and just push the scorpion out of the way so its attack is harmless. And Zappy Kill is freed. That would also push the Firefly onto here, doing two dam uh, doing one damage to the Firefly next turn. That's not bad, and it would stop one of the enemies coming next turn. Um, what else? We could actually sit on top of the enemy, if for all good it would do, and block it because the armor would take that one damage from the enemy trying to emerge without hurting us. That's another useful thing to remember. 
Or we could drop a rock on... Well, if we drop a rock there, the rock's going to be sitting here, but um, dropping rocks on top of enemies about to emerge is another thing that we may be able to do. I think Grapple Fire is going to have to pull the scorpion off the building in order to save the building. Big question is, can I do this in a different way so that we get two enemies together and able to damage two of them at once and still save the buildings? I really don't see that's going to be possible. Uh, Grapple Fire can't move here. Grapple Fire could move here and pull this all the way up here. Then we could line them up and zap them all in without moving, and then drop a rock on them. That building would be safe because it would be up here, and those would be pushed out of the way and hurt, and that firefly would die. That would be ideal. But with only three movement, unfortunately, Grapple Pie can't get there. That's a shame. That would be a lovely move. Is there anything else Grapple Fire can usefully do? Like, we don't want to be in line with those two with Grapple Fire because that will obviously uh, take lightning damage. Which I don't want. Oh, well, we're going to be. Well, we're going to be dropping a rock there anyway, so that's going to be a problem. Oh, that would have been brilliant because we would drop a rock on that one, pushing these two out of the way. But we'd line them up, we'd zap them all, we'd drop a rock, we'd kill two of them. Oh. Damn it! Damn it, Isabel, why can't you move further? Why didn't I start you over here? Because I had no idea this situation would arise. I thought I might have to pull things sideways. I could just sit here and pull the Firefly up to here, but that doesn't help anything at all because uh, pulling the Firefly... Firefly just flies in a straight line. Yeah. First things first. Let's drop our rock. For no damage, but saving attacks. She was under that move. Now, if, uh, if Zappy kill. We'll come up here and zap the Firefly. The Firefly will still die next turn. We'll get a new one. But it'll be dead. That might be good. Still fairly central, so still pretty much got access to... Uh, with four movement to everywhere we need to, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, not, not so much. Uh, probably good enough. Let's go here instead. And just do, do some damage dealing at least. Uh, let's grapple you away from the building so the building is not going to be hurt. Missed! Hit the mountain. And their five flies dead and the enemy did not come up. But the other one did. Oh look at that, they're bunching up! Partly. So we got two scorpions bunched up together. Um, which is interesting, but not necessarily in a position that we can kill them. We have Isabel tied up by one of the scorpions. And we have the firefly ready to uh, shoot one of the solar farms, which is we definitely don't want. What I'm thinking of doing is dropping a rock. Mm. Yeah, I could drop a rock onto this scorpion, damaging it for two, but I'll push this one into the building, which would basically, you know, just have a 82% chance of destroying the building. So basically that building would be toast. That's not so good. I could drop a rock on top of Grapple Pie, uh, doing one damage thanks to the armor, 
And that will push this scorpion into the other scorpion, doing one damage to both of them. We could then walk up here. And, uh, and I think it would free... I think it would free Isabel when that one gets pushed. I don't know. I hope so. I really hope so. Then we can walk up here and zap them with lightning. And that leaves Isabel free to come down here, tank. Stop this enemy spawning and tank. Uh, and not take damage thanks to the armor. And pull this firefly out of the way. That's plan A. These two guys next to each other are nice to zap with lightning, but we need to do three damage to kill them. And I don't see any way to do three damage to both of them without pushing them into each other. Dropping bombs on my own, well, rocks on my own team doesn't sound like the smartest idea I've had. But I think it'll work. Maybe I can reset a turn if it doesn't work. I don't know. I'm going to try it because... Well, with this attack doesn't matter. If we don't do that, we have two enemies to stop attacks with. We can't... We only push this one out of the way with the rock wall. So we'd have to tank one attack anyway to take damage. Take the firefly attack. You know, sit there and attack it. We could damage these two and not kill anything. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try... Yes, we run damage to everyone there, but that's... That's okay. Will it free up? Will it free up? Isabel. I'm gonna just do a quick test move. So that definitely shows Isabel being pushed away. But there's no icon indicating whether that uh, the webbing breaks. So I don't know whether this is actually gonna break the webbing as well. If it doesn't, then we're gonna end up dealing two damage to poor Isabel all this turn. But we will kill both scorpions. The scorpions are such a pain because they block block our movement and really limit our options. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw rocks. Hey Isabel, catch! It did not break the web. That is unfortunate. Isabel, I'm sorry that uh, you keep getting electrocuted. It's very unfortunate. Maybe you should uh, coat your mech in rubber. And we have a critically damaged mech, which, you know, not the most fun. But we can... Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. I was thinking it pulled at one space, but no, it pulls all the way, so now we're threatening a different building instead. This is... this is... Stupid. This is... Andy being really daft. I can't undo my move, and I wasn't paying attention to the icons that would have told me that, because I just did it too quickly. I still have my reset turn. Is there any way better? I mean, I could have moved in its path and tanked this damage. We wouldn't have blocked an enemy. We would have had four enemies to deal with next turn. Uh, but we wouldn't risk losing building. I don't want to risk losing building so early. I'd... Power is high, but, you know, that's the way we lost the... Failed to save the world last time. We ran out of... Uh, uh, too many buildings got destroyed and our power grid was depleted entirely and... Uh, that in that timeline humanity was lost again. Who knows what's coming up next? I might want the research now. Nah, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna do it now. Yes. Oh. Uh. Right. I can do the same same moves again, which will still unfortunately deal two damage to Grapple Pie. I don't see any other way of pushing these two unless into each other unless they drop the rock on the building, which is even worse. So, Grapple Pie will be down to one hit point plus the armor, so it can still tank two damage, which I think is, you know, an acceptable compromise. 
No, it's still tank one damage without without being risky with only one hit point. So same moves here. Kill these two. And now instead of sitting there. Well we don't need to grapple this firefly particularly, we can just block it. But if I sit here we limit their movement quite a bit. And hopefully they all bunch up next turn. And we can get Isabel out of the way, so we don't have to electrocute Isabel once again. And that's where this escape room might come in handy. Or even, hmm. yeah, let's let's do that. I'll leave it back because if it has to spend its movement, you know, if it has to use its movement points to move, we'll do that. So it's not going to damage us. So there's no threat from that Firefly this turn. We'll have four enemies next turn. Hopefully they will bunch up nicely and we can do a bunch of damage to them with rocks and lightning. We've got three turns. Well, two more turns after this. Oh, wrong button, wrong button. End turn, not undo move. Ah. Uh -huh. Hornet. And another Firefly and I think as a soldiers of Scion, making them all stronger. And they're not bunching up. These they're too damn smart. So Soldier Scion Yeah. Gives it gives one HP to all the others. So we've got four hit points on the Fireflies and three on the Hornet. Now with two attacks only We cannot kill everything here. Um, we can lightning or drop a rock on top of the Soldier Scion to kill it. Then we only have to deal with this attack on this Hornet. We can use what we... Can this attack next to itself? No, it's just like the artillery, it can't be adjacent. Um, so we have... That's an ordinary Firefly, so we could certainly just go and sit in its path and, you know, it tank its attack for no trouble, that's all we could pull it out around. Can we do anything more interesting? I'm just wondering if there's a way Grapple Pie can move. Nah. I was wondering if there's a way if I can move into this path, pull an enemy towards itself, so that we get a better lightning attack. But that means the enemy's going to be next to Grapple Pi, which means the lightning will also impact Grapple Pi, which means Grapple Pi will be dead because lightning does two damage and our armor only absorbs one of those. And I, that's definitely not. A plan that we can do at this stage. We can ignore this firefly if we must. Oh, here's a thing. Force grapple only pulls, not pushes. If we drop a rock here, we push this firefly on there, blocking an enemy and causing it to take one damage next turn. We push the Scion into the path of this Firefly, blocking its attack. So that means we actually do not need to kill any of those. But these two are then next to each other, so we could do a lightning attack if we want. Here's a question. The Lightning Whip. Chain damage to adjacent targets. Does it attack all around our mech? I'm just doing a test move. No, it only attacks the one next, so we, we can't attack both of those at once by sitting there. That's okay. Rock here. Push that one. Cool. Push that one. No damage dealt so far, but this will take one. These will be next to each other, ready for a lightning attack. And um, we can pull this Hornet up here into the path of the Fireflies attack, so it takes one damage as well. There's an idea. That sounds better than merely killing this one this turn. We can kill this one next turn easily. 
Yeah. That's better than dropping a, a rock just on that, I think. We will get one new enemy next turn, but that's fine. The light, oh, the soldier sign would be dead anyway, thanks to the lightning, so. Oh. Bear that in mind. Who's, who's attack over there? That's the attack over there. But. As long as we're careful about where we're lightning from. No. We could tank. Hmm. We can't move. That means we can't use Isabel. Well, can't move here anyway because there's only three movement. But we wouldn't be able to move to here. The soldier sign will be in the way anyway. But after we kill the soldier sign, we wouldn't be able to move here and pull a hornet there usefully because it wouldn't block this attack. And well, ideally we want it to take damage. Fireflies taking damage is more useful because they've got more hit points anyway. Which means it would be up to Zappy Kill to sit like, here for the lightning attack and tank one damage. And in two turns, I think taking, tanking one damage is perfectly acceptable. So let's let's do that. That's a very fun plan. We've got to move here because there's nowhere else I can actually uh, launch the rock from. Wait. Oh, that won't push. Oh, unlike the normal lasso, this only pushes the ones on either side, not in front and behind. So that won't do what I want at all. Okay, well, I need to rethink. So we'll push this one out of the way, but that's, you know, that's what's the side effect. I wanted to line them up. We could... Oh, we could launch a rock there. And line them up for a lightning attack. Then... We still tank the damage for the lightning attack. We could sit here with our mech. I think we can get there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we could certainly get there. We couldn't get Isabel in a place to pull the Hornet safely. We can't We can't get Isabel to pull the Hornet first because we can't have Isabel adjacent to that lightning. But that way we would, we would kill the Soldier Scion, which would remove these guys' extra hit points. And we would do two damage to both of these. We would have four damaged enemies, or five, four damaged enemies and one undamaged next turn. This attack would just harmlessly get hit and a despot. Yeah, I think I think that's the way to go. I don't think there's any better way to use my rock than use it to set up a lightning attack. So we don't even have to, have to move, we just drop a rock right there. We can ignore this firefly's attack, because there's nothing further in the way. We can run around any, well, anywhere here, yeah. but we need to stop this attack, so run here and lightning. Oh, and that's in storm. Well, I can't attack this turn. Not that it matters. Um, even if we sat here to tank it, you know, it wouldn't have damaged us. And we, oops, we will grapple this one out of the way so its attack just hits the desert in front. Right, we don't have a set number of enemies to kill, so as long as we just defend the solar farms, we're good. Sorry. Uh, not a scorpion. Oh dear. Went. I was afraid of that. On the other hand, that's only one. Two of them decided to attack our weakest enemy, uh, who actually has armor and would be able to uh, shrug off both attacks. More importantly, if Isabel moves out of the way, their attacks are entirely pointless. That's a little silly from their point. They've got, you know, this is their last chance to do damage to buildings and stuff. And they chose to attack a movable object 
which will move. Uh, though exactly where and how, I am not yet certain. We can we can also kill. If I move out of the way, I can use the rock to, to push them and kill them, but killing is not the priority. Uh, this scorpion has webbed us, so we can't move. But also, we can take its one damage attack and not care if we need to. So we have to deal with this hornet and this firefly to stop their attacks. We can pull the firefly here, like we sit there and pull the firefly, but that means we can't do a lightning attack because we would kill Isabel, so that's definitely not ideal. We could tank its attack. Oh, we could tank its attack and pull there, but we can't move, so that doesn't help us to do anything useful. We can drop a rock on this hornet, it's the easiest way to kill it. can't actually pull it anywhere useful because we have to sit there and pull it to attack that which is even worse. So I think we've got to use the rock. We've got to drop the rock on that hornet. That's the only way we can stop it. It's not even in lightning range if we wanted to walk up there and lightning it. So this must be done. That leaves Isabel to try and deal with something. Deal with this firefly. Probably just stop its attack. I don't think we can use the grapple very usefully. But just move there. It'll attack for one. That's, that's fine, you know. One damage will not hurt Isabel at all. Now if Zappy Kill attacks here, oh, we will kill two enemies. Oh, this is this is unfortunate that Zappy Kill is getting all the kills because uh, our pilot there, Lauren, has now reached the max level, so getting additional experience is not unlocking extra skills. But killing two enemies sounds like a fun idea anyway, so let's do it. And we still have our grapple, so we can actually pull Zappy Kill out of the way to not take damage. So let's do that. Isabel, unfortunately, is the one that's absorbing all the damage here, but can save some damage to our mix. Not that it matters, because it's the final turn. Let's do it. Splash. Miss. And they retreat. So once again, all the civilians saved. We defended both solar farms and got a bonus to our grid defense of plus two. So now we're up to 20%, thanks to the pilot bonus as well. Um, the solar farms are essential for maintaining the grid. It's a miracle you get Vec from destroying them. So our power grid got maxed out. Bonus grid defense. A little bit of XP for these, but uh, not much because, well, if they're not doing much killing, they're not getting much XP. And unfortunately, it's our pilot that's leveled up the most that has the the mass, what was it, mass destruction weapon that, that gets the most kills and the most XP. That's an unfortunate side effect of... XP accrued only from kills, but you know, we'll take it. Okay, one more mission. Proving grounds, defend the bombs, or Gamma Trench. Gamma Trench has lots of bonuses. Two rep and one power. It has a high threat, which means it's got an Alpha Firefly right there at the start, uh, which if I remember right, does two or three damage of its attack, its projectile attack, and has five hit points. Um, we need to kill at least seven enemies for one of those bonuses. We need to destroy two mountains for another. I presume that means we can let their Vec destroy two mountains, you know, so that's an idea. Uh, we have our ways of killing are basically bunching up the enemies or pulling them into water, which means we'd probably want the tank sitting along here to pull things towards water. The grapple pie. I'm going to try it. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to do all the bonus objectives, but we will see how we go.
scorpions. Oh, I hate scorpions. I really hate scorpions. Um, Hornet, Alpha Firefly, which uh, three damage, yeah, and two scorpions. So Zappy Kill probably wants to be sitting around here. Block some movement further in, and encourage the enemies to bunch up some more. Grapple Pie, as I said, we probably want to be able to pull enemies into the water, so... Although we're not going to be able to do that this turn if we start there, because one, two, three movement will pull them to here, but... Oh, we could go there, because that lets us get to there. Maybe, maybe that instead. With more movement, Zaki Kill can still get around. And Rockstar in the middle here says so free movement, movement along all these spots. Let's try that. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. No, the other five light decides to try and attack right away. They're bunching themselves up a little. Okay. I'm not quite sure I like this. Well, I didn't say it would be easy. Isabel could tank that attack, but it would take two damage. You know, that's not... That's a lot less than ideal. What's the attack order? Alpha Firefly attacks first. It would be very nice if we could push the Alpha Firefly over here. Which would hit the Hornet. With its attack, kill the Hornet for us. Because the Hornet is attacked after it. And it would take one damage from that, plus whatever else we might want to do to it. That means we wouldn't be lightning it this turn, because we would kill the Hornet and put the buildings in danger again. And that means we'd be dropping a rock here to damage that Scorpion. So far, so good. Then. Pie could move here and pull this scorpion into the water. That's not bad. The scorpion would drown. That'd be another one dead. So the hornet would die on their turn. The scorpion would die this turn. Then what does Zappy Kill do? Zappy Kill can't really get anywhere useful to to do any zapping this turn. So we'd probably just move up here for. Uh, to prepare for next turn, I guess. That's fine, we don't have to attack every turn. That's good. I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. Wait, wait, undo that move. Can Zappy Kill get to a point position to zap no, I can't make it here. If we could make it here we could zap these two first. Damaging them both, that would means we'd do a total of three damage to the Firefly, which would be to the Alpha Firefly, which would be ideal, but we can't do that. Unfortunately, that's a Hornet, not a Scorpion, so zapping these two together would kill it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's gonna have to happen. Bang. So, Alpha Firefly will kill the Hornet first, the building will be safe. Because the Hornet won't get a chance to attack. Now, pulling this one into the water is probably what I plan to do. No new options have arisen here, so I'm just going to move up. Actually, right here will give us lots of flexibility to move around next turn. I'm not going to do this attack, it would actually be counterproductive right now. So I'm going to move here, and drown that scorpion. Alright. They can take each other out conveniently, and taking damage from blocking each other. Alpha Firefly is, I was going to say harmlessly attacking us, but uh, we can't move so it's not quite so harmless.
All right, so this scorpion is on one hit point. If we do a lightning attack, it dies. The hornet dies as well. So far, so good. We could just... We don't want this attack to proceed, but as soon as the scorpion dies, then grapple pie can move here and grapple the alpha firefly, which is not massive. It will drown. Grapple straight into the water. That sounds like a really, really good idea. So, at the cost of doing lightning damage to poor Isabel again, I could I could free Isabel from this web right away. <laughs> Isabel is really going to hate me here. Uh, she's always getting electrocuted. Can I do this in a different order to avoid that problem? If we're going to drown the Alpha, Alpha Firefly anyway, I don't need to use the rock on it. Which means I could drop the rock here. I know that the rock is a rock, the rock blocks things, that's bad. I could drop the rock here, perhaps. Will it sit in the water and block our path? Because that would be bad, or will it drown in the water? I don't know, and I'm not sure I want to test that with a turn reset. I might do a mech test after this to find the answer. We could certainly drop a rock. You know, if the rocks are free to move, we could drop it on uh, one of these to stop an enemy eater. There's no problem there. Except it's not the enemy. We can't do either of these because we push him out of the way and then we wouldn't get a nice bunch of kill. If I move here... Oh, actually, that, that's fine. We, could drop, we can move up here, drop the rock there later on. Push this guy harmlessly into the desert because we'll kill these. And block one enemy next turn. Blocking a spawn is always a good idea. Right, I'm I'm very sorry, Isabel, but uh, these enemies must die, and you must be freed to kill the alpha. Well done. That's lots of XP for you there. So actually, we can drop the rock anywhere we like. Lauren can't move. I don't want to drop it there, that's going to restrict our movement options a little too much, I think. I'm not going to go right up here because that means limits uh, Rockstar's movement next time. So I'm going to drop it on here just to stop one enemy coming up next time. No, oh, I wouldn't limit our movement options because I would have got destroyed by the enemy trying to come up. Two fireflies and three more enemies coming up next turn. So one of these we can immediately grapple into the water. That's brilliant. Uh, the other one. Here's something I really wondering about. No, the uh, lightning attack doesn't go through water. I was just wondering if we lightning attack water, does it? Does it spread? So. Um, How do we deal with this Firefly? Its attack is that actually not a threat to us because of the armor. So we certainly drop a rock on it, but I do not want to use the lightning on it. And I don't want to push it this way, because then it will attack the building. But a free a free kill on this Firefly seems like a you know too good an opportunity to pass up, so I'm just gonna do that right away. Thank you. Uh, Isabel's going to be leveling up very soon. I guess that's some recompense for all the uh, electrocution. We can... So I'm not going to lightning... I don't think we're going to lightning this one. I'm going to drop a rock at it. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to drop a rock at it. And Lauren is... I think Lauren's just going to sit here and block one more enemy. We'll take one damage, but I think that's acceptable. We've almost killed... Oh, we've not been destroying any mountains. Well, there's, our, there's our mistake. We're not going to get that bonus objective, I don't think. Hmm. 
But we need to kill our seven enemies, so that was not a bad attack. What if I let them all come up? Does that increase the chance they will bunch up? And sit here or something so they bunch up all around me. That's not a bad idea. Let's try that. Let's let's try and tempt them into their own tomb. Force it there. If I sit here, I might actually tempt. If one of them is a firefly, I might tempt it into attacking down this path, and we can move it out of the way. Have destroyed that mountain because it's already damaged. One hit will destroy it, and we'd be halfway to our objective. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if we can use their own attacks for our ends. Splash! On it! Scorpion, our oh, MSO on to make them harder to kill. They're bunching out, but not really in a very useful fashion. That is annoying. Boo. So as far as I can see, we're not going to be destroying those mountains today. Question is, can we destroy anything else? If I drop a rock on top of poor old Zappy Kill, that from from here, which I can't reach, so I can't do it. So never mind. As I say, that would that would actually push the scorpion into the water. Oh, that's a oh no, that's not an alpha. It's just got extra damage. That'll push the scorpion into the water and kill it, and that'd be our seven kills. And we would have a lightning attack to destroy a mountain, and a grapple can't destroy a mountain anyway. So what am I talking about? We have a hornet. We must do something about. And we have a Firefly that we must do something about. Which could just be as simple as blocking it. Uh, we could... Use our Grapple to pull... Zapikil out of trouble there. But then we can't move. Because we can't move after we attack. And we probably want to just sit in the way there to stop that attack. Because it's the cheapest way of doing it. If we're sitting in the water, we can't attack either. So we may not be able to use the grapple this turn. So what can I do with the rock? I could... drop the rock on the hornet. That wouldn't kill it. It would push Zapikil into... No, that's not good. Zapikil can take the damage from the scorpion, that's not a problem. If Zapikil lightnings the Scion, then the Hornet will be down to 2 damage and a dropping a rock on it will kill it. As well as actually moving Zapikil out of the way so we don't take damage. We're not going to get the mountain objective, I think, but we will kill 7 enemies and we will protect the power generator and that's pretty good. We will also all survive. All of those are good things. And no buildings will take damage. That's Again, it's always hard for me to remember because these are these bonus objectives, they're all optional. There's this nice little uh, display here to say to tell us all about them. But they're optional. This is our main objective, protect the power grid. And protecting power generator will increase our grid defense a little more as well. And the more that goes up, the better. Yes, let's go drop a rock. No, let's go start by destroying the Scion. Great! Everything else is down to fewer hit points. Let's drop a rock on the Hornet to destroy it and save Zapikil from some damage. And, uh... Well, we could pull him, him into there, but he would drown right away and not block this attack. So we need to block the attack. We can't attack from here anyway. So we will win, but not just do all the bonus objectives. That's fine. Splash. 
Miss. All the buildings, all the civilians are saved. We got one rep and one power. So our defense has leveled up to 22% chance of buildings projected damage. The vet casualty report was sufficient, but with the stable landmass remaining, they could still use them as hives to replenish their numbers. Well, I think that's flavor text. I'm not sure that's actually meaningful. And we've almost leveled up here, 21 out of 25. We've still got a long way to go with um, Rockstar. Now that gives us Scorched Earth to look at, which is also a three objective one. However, it has been an hour and ten minutes. I'm going to stop for a very quick tea break. I'm going to call this episode five and then continue on for another hour or so for episode six afterwards. So thank you for watching. I will be back in about five minutes.